<laughs> the... So, two female real estate agents' bodies turn up. These two female real estate agents, uh, uh, what they have in common is, well, one, they're female, okay? They listen to Meg Thee Stallion. Oh, no, this is 2000-something. Early, too early. Another thing they have in common, no, not feminism. <laughs> and no, not Asian. They could be, I don't know. But get this, let me stop playing with you. They both had dealings or deals, real estate deals, with Mr. Satoshi Nakamoto LaRue. Another thing they have in common is their dealings or deals fell through. It didn't complete. Paul's new lead enforcer, new shooter, this time is a trained sniper named Joseph Hunter. That's the new David Smith. He hired two men on his behalf to pop both of the women. On two separate occasions, the men posed as property buyers. And when the real estate agents came through, they lured him in the house and began the assassination. They assassinated the woman during the visits to their locations. They were pretending to purchase. But it didn't stop there. Pa started to uh, get in touch with his shadow self, might I say, or I think he started to fall in love with this big gangster mob boss persona because uh, 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 so far we're what three bodies in that we know of okay it didn't stop there check this out so the year is 2009 okay a ship like a big boat a ship gets busted Get stopped by the Coast Guard or whatever the water police is. They stop it, pull it over almost like a car. The name of the ship was Captain Ufok. Ufok in Arabic means horizon. So Captain Ufok, the ship, okay, check this out. Turns out Paul was responsible for the fallout of the Captain Ufo. So he hired a man named Bruce Jones to sell a shipment of rifles from Indonesia to the Philippines. So Filipino customs was tipped off some way, somehow, and they were alerted to the presence of the ship right off the coast and they you know they didn't drive they what what do you call it when on the water they uh, took the boat and headed towards captain ufuk when they arrived they began to inspect the ship and they found a crate of rifles and the crew, of course. The crew of the ship. Right? Now, I think the crew were pretty clueless to what was going on because they were just crew. They didn't know what was moving in or out. They're just crew, right? So the Filipino authorities, they pull up, they're like, look at me, I am the captain now. But then the, the crew is like, hey man, I don't know what's going on. They start yapping. They start talking. Like, no, 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 please. Please, Mr. Filipino. I have a family, okay? I don't know what's going on. So they tell them that, they tell the Filipino customs that 
most of the crates that were here had already been taken off the ship. So it was crates. Yes, there were crates here like uh, 30 minutes ago. But someone came and took the crates right off the ship. Right before you guys came, Mr. Officer, sir. The Filipino customs like, hmm? Oh, the, what do you mean they came and took it? Who came and took it? I don't know. Bruce Jones had came and took it. The new uh, uh, enforcer. The new top shooter. All right? David Smith 2.0. Bruce. He put up, grabbed the crates, and fled the scene. And he was assumed to be the main suspect by the media. Because this made a big media a buzz. Captain Ufuk was all over the news. Uh-uh. Because he took a left. Remember when I said, this is where things take a left? It seems that he's just been going in circles because he took a left and a left and a left. Had a couple bodies on the way. Still took a left. Oh, the... This is how far left he became. All right. So far left, he looked like H3. <laughs> oh, the... So, the year of uh, 2009. The year 2009. Let's go back real quick. Our story for this time takes place in the water. Yes, the water. The seas, okay? Somewhere, somewhere near the Filipino uh, uh, waters. A ship named Captain Ufuk which I believe is an Arabic word, Al-Ufuq, which means horizons. Captain Ufuq. This ship had a bunch of crates in it. And it had a bunch of crates. It had a crew, classic crew, you know, just like any ship, right? And it had a captain. Who's the captain? Uh, I mean, I'm going to tell you who's the captain. It was, uh, what's his name? Brucey Bruce. Bruce Jones. The new David Smith. The new top shooter. The hitter. All right. The new hitman. He was playing hitman one. Now he got hitman three. Good game, by the way. I recommend it. It was fun. So he got this new man. Uh, um, plan or being the captain of said ship, bunch of crates. The ship shows up on the radars, or their the authorities are tipped off, one of which, and it fails to identify itself. So somehow, Brucey Bruce is alerted to the fact that the boys are after him. I say the boys, all right, it's a Toronto slang. It means the cops or, or police or any authority. In our specific case, the authorities were the Filipino customs. Okay. Not customs and traditions. The customs that be in the border that uh, uh, want to see what you got coming in or going out. Alright, so they see a ship that, so 90 miles off of Manila, Philippines, the Boydom, or the boys, okay, the Filipino guys, they see that this ship is coming in, but not giving any notice of arrival, not identifying itself. Oh, why is that? So... I'm guessing uh, 
So they got tipped off, but so did Bruce. Bruce said, hell, hell, they can catch some of these crates, but they ain't going to take all of it. Oh, that's a loss. The boss going to hurt me. So he started offloading some of these crates, or should I say most of these crates, onto a yacht. And he ditches the main ship, takes most of the crates with him. Notice how I said most, not all. Most of the crates with him. So he hops on a yacht and he says, Pew! I'm out. Peace out. <laughs> uh, right, right, right as he leaves, he's gone now. Okay, into the wind. All right, he, he peaced out on his yacht. All right, the police and the uh, Filipino customs arrive to Captain Ufuk, the main ship. When they reach, they begin inspecting the ship. Um, they find two things. A little bit of crates and the ship crew. Little do they know. Okay, they thought what? What, what, what are you thinking that we're going to find, oh, Captain? A brick, a couple of bricks, a yola, what, a couple of pounds of weed, maybe seal, pints of lean, heading to your local uh, 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 plug? Nah. He wishes that's what it was. Instead, little did they know, they just uncovered one of the craziest arms smuggling operations. Probably in the history of the Philippines, if not the world. Keep in mind, we're only talking about the crates that were left. Not the ones Bruce loaded up on that thing. However, even though Bruce took off with the crates, he forgot to take one thing with him. His, his identity as a captain. So he's identified. So, to be exact, they have found over 50 Gale assault rifles on board. Allegedly, it was purchased in Indonesia. And it was intended for sale to a group of Filipini or Filipino politicians. That's what they said. But just wait, wait a second. It gets crazy. Captain Bruce Jones, a.k.a. Here's his full name. Bruce Anthony Jones, who was 50 years old. Quite the OG. Okay. Was identified. He was um, uh, portrayed as the main suspect by the media because this ship or this bust caught caused quite the media frenzy. The media made it look like he was the one behind it, and the police wanted to bring him in for questioning. So Bruce, just like that, became a wanted man, okay, for questioning and other things. The journalist So the journalist who broke the story about Captain Ufuk, a man named Mar Supnad. He was contacted by Bruce's lawyer, Joe Zuniga. And YouTube, please do not demonetize me. This is the man's name. It is spelled Z-U. The N has a mustache on top, like Spanish. I-G-A. Zuniga. I swear to God. Look it up. If any... Reports come because of what I said. 
I will appeal it and prove that this is his name. You can look up. So don't waste your time trying to hate. Okay. Anyway, that's not F these haters. So they arranged a meeting where Bruce explained to Mar, the journalist, that he believed the shipment to be legitimate as the transaction was supervised by the Indian police. Now, Bruce, let me tell you something, Bruce. Bruce, we all done some things we ain't supposed to be doing. I'm from the streets. But if you're going to lie, you're 50 years old. At least make it make sense, bro. Okay? You're telling me, oh, you believed it was legitimate? So why did you take the crates and... <sighs> Let's stop playing with each other, Brucey. Moving on. He said he thought it was legit. He thought it was legal. He thought the uh, in Indonesia police knew about it and approved it. I don't blame him. Paul had a bunch of politicians on board. But he said, oh, I didn't know before. But see, now, okay, now I realized that I was hired by criminals. And you know what? I'm 50 years old. I can't be living on a run. I'm here, guys. Okay, I set it up with my lawyer. I will come in and, and, and just put me on witness protection program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And put me on the witness protection and I will give everybody up. I'm going to tell you what's up. Just leave me alone. Holy. Now, again, I don't promote crime or glorify it or, or even carry. I'm not a criminal. But devil's advocate. You're trying to play the good game. You're trying to play the Takashi 6 9 Okay, cool. Let me tell you something, Bruce. Did you forget when you popped, what's his name? The John Doe name having dude, Dave Smith, and made him dig his own. Come on, bro. Did you forget what's the job title? Or maybe it wasn't official. You thought it was legit. Really? Really, Negro? Oh, la. Trying to play cute and innocent. Come on, bro. So you're telling me. You've you and your boss together took turns popping, dude. After you made him dig, now you're coming up talking about witness protection. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be protected, all right, in heaven, which is exactly what happened. Right after he came up and, and publicized that, or maybe he didn't even publicize it. Could have been in private. Did you forget that your boss is, 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 is he's not chatty from Treyway <laughs> in a black sleeping on the floor. He's hanging out with politicians, bro. He run. Come on, bro. You could have. Hey. It is what it is. So check this out. Paul, at this point, he was, um, he got over his, uh, 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 uh. His, um, how do you say it? And I've never took a life, but I've heard this because I watched uh, Gondam show, actually. He described MBS, Saudi. He said that <laughs> the hardest time to pa -pa -pa is the first time. And unfortunately, he got a taste for it. And now it becomes as easy as drinking water. On top of that, he ain't got no time right now to make you dig your own and, and pop you and be like, why did you do me? Why, brother? Pa. Nah, it ain't personal no more. He barely trusts himself. Paul is at the height of his paranoia and the height of his criminality. He ain't got time to get buddy-buddy with you and ask you why before he pop you. Nah, bro. Two men pulled up. Next to, 
You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube. Make sure to click the like button, smash the subscribe button, and leave a comment for the algorithm.